All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego as per usual. And today I'm joined by Dr. Kevin Elko, who is over the other side of the country in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. How are you doing, Kevin? Good, but you look look you look warm and I feel cold. Does that tell you anything? I wish I was in San Diego with you, John. Yeah, no, it is true. It is true. It it is nice to be able to. Uh, it is nice to be able to still go around in shorts and t-shirts in uh, in January. I have to say, although we did have our winter storm um, last week, we all agreed. We voted on it and said these are the four days of rain we will accept this year, and uh, that's all good. <laughs> well, we voted these are the four days we'll accept it with it this year, but that vote was vetoed here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right. Uh, so, um, uh, Dr. Kevin, he works with organizations uh, in the areas of leadership, goal setting, and various other motivational topics. You have worked with sports teams like the Philadelphia Eagles uh, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. I was actually going to say that. How did working with the Philadelphia Philadelphia Eagles go down with your neighbors in Pittsburgh? <laughs> well, they did. <clears throat> they. I, well, I don't work with them this year. They didn't get too excited. I tell you what I did do. <coughs> Excuse me. What, what I did do is I worked for the Green Bay Packers mm -hmm. the night before they played Steelers in the Super Bowl. I didn't know John was going to happen. I mean, I was with the Packers yeah. all along. I knew they were going to play. That didn't go down too good, but they don't get too excited. They're not in the same division with the Eagles, so they didn't yeah, really yeah. care much. No rivalry there. Right, right, right. So after the Packers, after the Super Bowl, then you uh, you were able to come back home, what, two years later, three years later? Right? Yeah, well, I lived here the whole time. Yeah, that's right. I had to have a bodyguard. I got a, I had a Yorkie as my uh, protective dog. No, we, there. I mean, everybody realizes it's sport. It's, it is what it is. Sure. But people get pretty serious about that stuff now. They can indeed. All right. So what we want to talk about today is how you can turn 2021 into a really good and productive year. So how you can come out of all of this, this turmoil or maybe perceived turmoil in many ways. You know, we may have let things get uh, on top of us. Um, it's been a difficult time. Um, so, Kevin, uh, what is the first piece of advice you would give to people as they face into 2021? When we what we went through, don't let last year change your identity and pick up. It starts with identity. It, it starts with seeing myself as strong. I worked with Alabama football last year, and we had this this deal. You're either the greyhound or the lion. The greyhound chases that rabbit around the track because it's hungry. Not mm -hmm. hungry doesn't chase. Lion eats every day. It's it's a DNA, and that's what part of being sales is. I got to go and eat every day. So our start with. Don't let last year make you the greyhound or even the sheep. Make sure you stay bold. You go out and hunt every day. Go out and live full. Go out and hunt. Go out and live bold. And you talked about me work with the Eagles. I was in Israel for a while. And there's a story about the man who built the wall around Jerusalem, Nehemiah. And there's a story about he came out and said, hey, someone said, come fight me. He didn't blink. He stayed on that wall. Keep the main thing, the main thing. And the deal I did, another story I got from Israel was working with Nick Foles. David became the second king. So I got your director of security. Who? Benaiah. What did he do? He came face to face with a lion. He ran at the lion. The lion turned and fell into a pit. He killed his bare hands. Nick Foles, hole at Super Bowl, run to roar, be bold. What's my advice? Stay bold. Keep your vision big. Go out and be the lion and go expect things to happen. Yeah, listen, that's that's fantastic adv advice, Kevin. So, so as you said, I mean, a lot of people are maybe beaten down from from last year, uh, maybe feel a little lost, a little uh, desperate, and and so when they hear something like this, maybe some people go, "Yeah, that that sounds great," but how do I take that first step? John, we're not beat down from last year. We're beat down by our thoughts. Mm -hmm. We're not beat down by last year. We're, down, it, <clears throat> we're beat down because we let our thoughts get conditioned. You have to reprogram your brain. Listen to this fancy phrase, neurons are fired together, wired together. If you think something over and over and over, your brain becomes it. you got to reprogram the brain because last year we allowed our brains to get programmed to think small. Hey, it's not. 
it's not that we shot big and failed. It's we shot too small and we succeeded. So the first step is get a card and start talking to you and learn to encourage you. Learn how to be a good friend to you. And my phrase, I got this from the Pittsburgh Steelers. We had a player, Chad Scott, blew his knee out. The head coach called me and says, come see Chad. He, I said, what are you doing, Chad? He goes, I'm chopping down trees, drinking battery acid. I don't know what the battery acid is, John, but keep chopping. Keep on going. Encourage you. Learn to be a good encourager of you. So what do I mm -hmm. think? I have one phrase I use. You want to hear my encouragement phrase? Yeah, please do. So what? Now what? So what? Now what? This happens. So what? Now what? What's next? And so start talking to you and using that phrase. Every time you found a challenge in a day, so what? Now what? Every time something stopped, so what? Now what? Every change, volatility. So what? Now what? Learn to talk to you. Reprogram that brain. Yeah, listen, I love that. Uh, I love that, Kevin, because I think sometimes people don't realize um, that they have the power to to reprogram their brains. And that, as you said, it's not so much uh, what happened to us last year. It's how we dealt with it or how we allowed it to impact us. And sure, you know, obviously, you know, some some awful things happen. But in general, uh, I think there's a lot more things within our control than we really believe. Look, successful winners, people that are in sales and they win, they conscientiously use their mind to win. They don't let their mind use them and they take it and they focus it. And look, I think last year was rough. All kinds of things happen. I get it. But when people have success, they find opportunity, they press it. And there are people who've done well because they stayed in vision. They pressed every opportunity, learned how to think and talk themselves about it. But you can't say the events did it, how I talk to me about the events does. And that's like the, that's like the whole ball game. And so don't let what don't let what just we went through used to be don't make honey. That's done. Mm -hmm. So now program our brain because, look, everybody kept saying, John, oh, I can't wait for 2021. Does 2021 seem less crazy to you than 2020? It's just no, a, no, it's, I, no, it's no, crazier. It was, I know it was great because everybody there was on, uh, you know, New Year's Eve going fantastic. It's all over tomorrow. The world is going to be a wonderful place. And guess what? It was, as you said, it wasn't just the same. It wasn't just as crazy. It was they crazy. got crazier. And so you've got no choice. Don't wish it were easier. You've got to get tougher. And you've got to learn how to use your mind. We have this deal <clears throat> and we do this deal called um, the 14 different challenges. And I'm going to reveal one of them right here. Nitty gritty mm -hmm. goals. Here's how you win. Get up, write up your box, write up your schedule. Here are the things I'm going to do. And here's a phrase we use in Alabama football. See a little, see a lot, see a lot, see nothing. Write up your to-dos, write up the things you could do to make a difference. Write up the things that, that, that relate to your goals and stay on it. We call them nitty gritty goals. And here's a self-talk you use. What's important now? Not what was, not what's coming. That list, those nitty gritty goals, the activity that day, stay on that. And to me, you, you could, this year could be the best year ever. If you quit paying attention to all this clutter mm. and you write up, here's what I'm going to do and stay focused, you're going to rise up. Yeah, no, I'm, I really love and I totally endorse that, uh, that piece of advice. I actually, I had an experience a number of years back where um, I was actually running two companies simultaneously for, for a parent company. And people used to ask me, how can you how can you run two companies at the same time and i said because i only focus on what's most important in both companies right. at one time that's exactly right you know the phrase what's important now is huge so stay mm -hmm. stay focused on this you can get a lot done if you stay if you stay focused on today's nitty gritty nitty important gritty finish it cal mm -hmm. newport jr is at mit and he goes there's one obsession with all successful people they have to finish what they started start it Less arrows, more wood. Here's the few things I'm going to do today. Prioritize them. Stay on it. You'll be fine. Yeah. Pay, quit paying attention to those clutter. Yeah. And interestingly, uh, there is, there's some research around the fact that if you actually physically write down your to-do list and physically cross them off, you're more likely to, to actually complete those tasks than if you are to just electronically record them. There was a book out called What They Didn't Teach You at Harvard School of Business. And incidentally, John, you're doing a fabulous job on this. You're, you're a very good interviewer. There's this book called What They Didn't Teach at Harvard School of Business by uh, Mark McCormick, who started IMG. He found a study was on the internet. It's in the stacks at Harvard about these people that wrote down their goals every day for 10 years. 
and these people that just put them in their head and people didn't do it at all. It was an MBA class. A hundred students were taught just what you said, write your goals and nitty gritty goals every day. I do it right here. And it's mm -hmm. one of the things, like I said, we do in our 14 challenges. They came back 10 years later, 84 didn't do any of it. 13 wrote the goals in their head. Three of them wrote the goals every day and their nitty gritty goals every day. They made 10 times as much money as the rest. You're right. It's not just a chicken soup for your soul idea. It's a steak and potatoes. There's research behind it. You write it, you keep feeding it, you program your mind. Here we go. You're exactly right. No, I always encourage people. There's mine. I always say, you know, just um, wherever it is. Nice little, nice little notebook. I have a stack of them. That's uh, and as Me I too. complete them, I can look at them in the closet and like think, oh, look at all the things we did. Um, but yeah, but let me get back to this idea of clutter, um, Dr. Kevin, because I think this is a really important thing because I'm sure you've heard this and I hear this over and over again where people go, oh, I just have no time. I'm, I'm, the, I'm busier than I've ever been you know, in my career. Uh, there's just so much going on. And I always say, though, are you really or are you are you just filling your, your life with so many distractions? Are you more distracted or are you more busy? The opiate of today is distraction. That's the opiate of today. And the first step in being successful is training your mind on what to ignore. This, watch this phrase, John, the skillful management of attention. And it's mm. training yourself on what not to pay attention to, what not to get caught into, what not to get engaged, the skillful management of attention. And when you're able to say, this is what matters. I just read a study and it said that um, 60, uh, 64% of all products, it's different than an 80-20 rule, but 60, 64% of all of our production comes from 4% of our activities. So you have to say, this is what really matters. And it's an old story that was done by Charles Schwab, who was the first CEO that made a million dollars in our country. He was at Bethlehem Steel. Someone said, look, God came to him early 1900s, says, write down six important things before you go to bed. When you get up, do number one. Don't go to three or four. And when you're done with one, go to two. Just try it and give me some money, whatever you think it's worth after doing it for a while. He did it for two weeks, called the guy back, gave him $25,000 early 1900s. It's wow. a simple thing. Do simple better. Write, write out six things that matter. Start at number one, go to number two, go to number three. We call them nitty gritty goals. And we do three areas. My business, professional life, my health, my relationships. These are things I'll do every day and just stay on them. And you'll have a great year. Yeah, you know, and I, lo I love that piece of advice. And and I think it's and I think people have to be honest with themselves, right? Is uh, is that they have filled their lives with clutter, they have filled their lives with di distractions, but it doesn't have to be like that. Because exactly what you outlined there is is bring some focus back and be a little bit more disciplined. I love. <clears throat> I've been a part of a lot of teams. I got. I got a bunch of those. Yeah, I see. So what it's about, it's accountability, John. You get people around you. When I work a lot in the financial industry, and again, in our 14 challenges, we say write up your nitty gritty goals, but share them. And there's a, a Deloitte study that says when your daily goals are transparent, like if you and I are going to say, hey, we're going to get our bodies healthier. And so here's what I'm going to do today. What are you going to do? And we shared it with each other beginning of the day. Our attention goes on that. So if we can just say, look, I'm going to, here's the things I'm going to do. Here's the things I'm going to do in business. And we just share them. At the end of the day, we come back and say, to what degree did I do them? Boom. Yeah. Boom. So no, it I, comes down to accountability. You know, I, I, I'm a big believer in that. And because I think, because uh, let's face it, as humans, we're hardwired to give ourselves get out of jail cards and, uh, yeah. and to come up with excuses why we couldn't do something. But when we, as you said, when we share it, when there's somebody else there, we all we already feel an obligation, um, even if they're not even saying anything. So we we want to come back to them and say, oh, it, by the way, I completed that. Exactly. And it keeps us alert. You're exactly right. Yeah. Um, and how do you uh, what would you say to what would you say to to people who maybe need just that extra kind of pickup? Right. You know, where they you know, maybe they had some experiences last year that didn't work well, whatever. And but now they're, they're faced in, into the new year. And what, what pep talk would you just give them to to, to really just grab on to this year? John, don't think you're into acting. Act your way into thinking. Don't think you're into acting. Act your way into thinking. 
you know, yeah. because we get addicted to motivation because we're making a huge mistake. We think motivation is a feeling. So you're saying, so the person said, I don't feel like, it. of course you don't feel like it, but winning is a choice. The mother of all motivation is a choice. So I know there's these motivational speakers. Let's get fired up. Let's get mm -hmm. going. Well, you know what? You're not always going to be fired up. It's not right. It's not natural. It's not human. So do, here's what I would say to you. Don't think your way into acting. Don't wait till you're going to feel it. I work in the NFL. Guys making millions of dollars. I'm not feeling it. You're not feeling it. You make, <laughs> you make $5 million. I ain't feeling it. What is that? And what you do is you act your way into feeling it you go do it go do what you're doing your feelings will catch you and just go start you know my 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 daughter wasn't feeling good yesterday and she's i don't know if i don't work out i go just start it just start it just just go do it even if you, you don't john you don't always have to feel something if every time you feel like leaving a relationship you're gonna be married about 30 times you know because i tell people all the time the person you date is not the person you marry you date their representative <laughs> 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 you know, if every time you don't feel like picking up the call and doing sales, you're not going to pick up the call. Uh -huh. Quit quit letting your feet. We have feelings. You know, I'm not confusing feelings with emotions. You should get fired up. But we do this thing in Alabama football. Even your emotions are a choice. Choose to have energy. Choose to be fired up. Act it until it becomes. But go, go just just go decide I'm going to be fired up. You got me fired up now. So what, <laughs> what you want to do is Go just do it. And I, the biggest mistake we've got is, oh, I, I'm not feeling it. You're not feeling it. Go do it. Your feels yeah. catchy. Yeah. No, I love, I love that we, do, we live in a very strange society sometimes, I think, today. Um, exactly what you pointed out is, uh, um, but the idea of choice, and I, and I really want to underline that is, I think that is the most important thing is sometimes people don't, don't believe or refuse to believe that they have those choices and exactly what you said sometimes it's it's just all about putting one foot in front of the other as you said just go doing it and 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 everything else will, it will catch up instead of giving ourselves excuses or or saying oh well you know I have no choices yes you do I work in the NFL and I go out to what they call the combines they bring John all the the college players in Indianapolis because of COVID we're not doing it this year and I interview them mm -hmm. And I ask a number of questions and I just says to them, talk. If I say something and they keep on saying, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel. I'm like, oh my goodness. The greatness always starts with one phrase. I decided, I decide to focus. I decide to forgive. I decide to have energy. I decide to win. I decided it always comes to that. And when you get up, you say, I decide, I decide today to smile. I decide to have energy. I decided, and that's where it starts. And my, my doctoral work was all with cognitive psychology, a lot of the work of Albert Ellis. And it all, to me, it comes down to, I called my major professor, I went to West Virginia, and I said to him, Ed, it all comes down to, it's his phrase, his name, Ed Jacobs. I go, it all comes down to a decision. It all comes down to choice. And we, and the deal you have to understand that you and I opened up with, neurons that fire together, wire together, if you keep on, if you keep on deciding, you get a deciding gene. You don't worry about feelings. You keep on feeling, you get a feeling gene. If you're good at worry and feeling, you practice, you get good at it. You get good at deciding, you keep practicing, you'll get good at that. So just, I decided. And I think speaking, it's powerful. My mm. words shall not come back void unto me. Speak it. I, let, let, you know, it used to be if you walk around and talk to a lot, they thought you're fruitcake. Cell phones, near pieces, you'll blend in. Just go ahead. And, but what you do is if you speak it, you'll start to hear it. I just speak it out loud. I don't care who hears me or not. <laughs> I love that actually nowadays. Yeah, it's perfectly socially acceptable. Just stick an ear, you know, an earpiece yeah. in and walk yeah. around and talk to yourself. You don't have to be on the phone to anyone. Might as well. It. Yeah. Um, but the point uh, that you raised there, I mean, just to come back to the uh, idea of, of choice is um, so we have choice. Um, but we don't always use it because we don't like decisions, right? I mean, we, we, a lot of people, we were hardwired not to want to make decisions or make choices because if you cho choose one thing, you by default unchoose other things. And we like to keep all our options open. Don't let your present appetite ruin your future feast. Underneath it all, John, we want comfort. We want easy and it's just who we are and we want safe. We're not wired to win. We're wired to be safe. And so really, I say this all the time, the, the amateur has a thousand different plans are all going to start tomorrow. And what we do is 
it's it, it you're not wrong if you're negative or you want to rest and you want comfort it's almost natural what we're doing is to be extraordinary to be supernatural to be super ordinary and to do that you need to reprogram your brain it's a natural pull to stop quit take it easy put your feet up but you have to train through it so our present appetite is comfort stop ease but you're going to destroy your future feast and so when you get the urge, learn how to, so what, now what, keep chopping, learn how to teach you to move through urges, you know, and keep on going through them. And just cause you got an urge, so what? So you got an urge to quit. You got an urge to stop. You know, you got an urge to sit down and eat a whole pie. I don't know. That doesn't mean you have to honor the urge. So yeah. train your mind to keep working and keep focused, have the eye of the lion. And so I think that you get the urges. So what you got an urge got an urge mm -hmm. learn to train your mind to work through it but you're exactly right our feeling i feel like quitting i feel like resting i feel like chilling i feel like drinking okay but i'm gonna decide not to yeah and and unfortunately uh, you know we live in this culture the perfase of culture of where everything is supposed to be easy uh, you know shortcuts to everything there's no you know there's it's almost like hard work is uh has become anathema to to many people, and I think that's where the challenge comes: is that you have to push aside, as you said, like push aside all these distractions, push aside the messages that the pervasive culture is, is sending you, and realize that everything worth doing. I mean, you have to apply yourself, and as you said, you're going to get urges, you're going to have times when you want to quit. It's going to be hard. You're going to you're not going to enjoy it all the time, right? You know, when I was growing up, there was a phrase, if it feels good, do it. And what kind of phrase is that? <laughs> if you feel good, if you feel good, do it. That was a bad way they had poster. If you feel good, do it. You know, and now you turn on infomercials, you know, drink this lotion when you go to bed and you'll lose 50 pounds. Yeah, because you'll be dead in the morning. I mean, <laughs> you know, everything, you right, the easy, the simple, the, you know, that's the infomercial thing. And look, they did a study and it, this was from Holly Haverson at Columbia. And they told people, they put on weight loss goals and they told this one group, have faith that you're going to lose weight. And they lost a lot of weight. They told the second group, have faith you can do it, but no, it's going to be hard. Tell yourself it's going to be hard. They lost 24 more pounds than this group. I'm with, I'm with University of Miami. We're playing Nebraska, the national championship out at the Rose Bowl. One of our players stood up, Joaquin Gonzalez. He goes, I expect this game tomorrow against Nebraska and the guy I'm going against to be the toughest game I've ever played and the toughest opponent. I'll bring the best me. I'll bring all of me. And he said to the room, John, match me. That was our rally call at the University of Alabama this year. Match me. Look, expect hard. Quit looking for easy. Stop wishing for easy. Expect 2021 be the toughest year. I mean, what do you mean? I thought 2020 was. No, expect 2021, be the toughest year you ever saw. So bring the best you. Most focused, most resilient, most gritty. Get Roll up your sleeves. Look, I'm up here at my country club and I'm not golfing. But they, they go, see those three guys over there? They don't know each other. They're all from the same country. They're billionaires. So I'm a, I'm a neb nose. So I go, how are you a billionaire? They go, we came from this cunt to this country, not for a job, for opportunity, because we knew it was here. And we came with all we've got. And that's how we saw it. I tell people, come to this country like a legal immigrant, come that way and expect it, but, but know how to get ready to fight. I'm gonna fight, I, I fought the good fight, I kept the faith. Keep, learn how to fight and go after something. To me, that makes life worth living. I have to fight for it. You know, I'm from the hills of West Virginia. My great grandparents were bootleggers. I mean, my grandparents were bootleggers. Let's go outrun something, you know, let's go fight. Yeah, and so I think that you have to expect hard. That, that, yeah. We've got to get over this thing that it's all easy. It's just simple. It's all infomercial. No, baby, it's tough. Roll up your sleeves, go fight for it. Yeah, no, I, I love that message, uh, Kevin. I agree 100%. It is tough and, uh, you know, it's, it requires hard work. It requires determination. But, you know, something um, that's where the reward comes when you make it through those. And, and, and that's where real reward comes, now, not when something hands you some placebo or, you know, some magic bullet that doesn't work because there are no such things. Um, and, and I just love that. I love what you just said there. It's perfect for, for this year for everybody is just, you know, 
cut the cut out the distractions, cut out the concept of easy, get down and work hard. And as a as an immigrant myself here, I can 100% uh, underline the fact that this is still the land of opportunity. Don't believe anybody. Don't believe anybody who says otherwise. 100%. You know, it's 100 percent. There was a guy washing it came from Pakistan and you know, he, I heard this guy speak. And he was washing dishes and um, just to feed his family. And uh, on the screen was a game. He said to somebody, what is that? I've never saw that before. What is that? Oh, that's an NFL football game. He's washing dishes, John. He mm -hmm. says this group. I'm going to own one of those one of those teams one day. They laugh at him. Today he owns the Jacksonville Jaguars. Wow, wow. that's unbelievable. That's come fantastic. like that, big, big vision. Come with a big vision. Go fight for it. Yeah, so I mean, I think that's a great message takeaway today. Is like, yeah, 2021. Don't expect it to be easy. Expect it to be hard, but go big. Go big with your vision and go grab it and 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 make this the greatest year you've ever had. I agree. Uh, Listen, um, Kevin, this has been fantastic. So all of Dr. Kevin's information is going to be below this video and links to his books and all of that. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. I am. Um, I'm from West Virginia. Went. I work with different teams and different companies. I, th this year, my big team was Alabama Crimson Tide. I call me the Alabama head coach. You can go to DrElko.com. We have something, John, I'm really excited about. And it is called the 14 Challenges to the Best You and the best year ever. And what it is, it's, it's pretty cool. It's we will send you a video every day, 10 minutes, and then we have a challenge for you in a workbook. And you do those challenges, I'm telling you, you're gonna have a great year. It's the 14 different challenges. And go to DrOka.com, sign up, get on your team, do those things. It's the same thing I've done with everybody, same thing I've done with the Crimson Tide. You're gonna come out with your own national championship. Go to DrOka.com, sign up for our 14 different challenges, 14 challenges to the best you, the best, best you and the best year ever. In addition to that, I have a book out right now called Believing is Seeing. It's my seventh book by Whitman mm -hmm. Publishing, Believing is Seeing, Coach Nick Saban. I uh, wrote the introduction to it. Him and I have been together for now 20 years down there with mm -hmm. Roll Tide. So either go to Amazon.com and get that. We have different programs if you go on our site, uh, DrElka.com. We have one called The Best Year Ever, which somebody just told me we just did a series. That's one of the best programs they ever saw. And we have another one called Locked In, Within, All In. You'll like either of those. But the one I'm urging you to look at is our program, 14 Challenges to the Best You and Your Best Year Ever. Fantastic. I really encourage people to look out for that. And we'll, you know, the, the links, as I said, will be below. But go on, take that 14 challenges and make this the greatest um, year you've ever had and, and be an example to those around you. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for today. Um, it's one of the best interviews I've had. You did a, gr a really good job, John. Oh, thank you. I, I really you're appreciate good. it. You're very good at what you do. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks again, Dr. Kevin. My name is John Thank Golden, you. Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.